What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip. Today, we're talking about the iPhone 12. Why Apple? Why would you do this? This, it's so freaking close to perfection, but you just, how are you so freaking blind? Maybe that's a little over the top. But there are some serious flaws with the iPhone 12, in my opinion. I'll be breaking down all the pros and cons, all the new features, and I'm gonna try to do it in a super simplified, fun way. It's gonna be freaking epic. Let's get started. So we've got the iPhone 12, and I actually have a dummy model of the iPhone 12 sent over to me by Caseify. It'll give us a really good idea of what it looks like and how it holds in the hand. First up, let's talk about all of the iPhone 12 models. We have the iPhone 12 mini coming in at 699. It's got a 5.4 inch, 476 PPI display. It's similar in size to the previous iPhone 8, basically the standard little smaller size, but the great thing is it has a much larger display. Now the iPhone 12 has a 6.1 inch display while being 15% smaller than last year's iPhone 11. That's pretty freaking impressive. That comes in at $799. Then we have the iPhone 12 Pro coming in at $999, also 6.1 inches and similar in size to last year, but again with a larger display. The iPhone 12 Pro Max, again similar to last year, but with a larger display at 6.7 inches and comes in at the same price of $1099. What are the standout? miraculous new features for these iPhones. First of all, we have the ceramic shield display. Apple is claiming four times tougher drop durability. We're gonna see about that coming soon. Yes, I will be doing a drop test for the iPhone 12 and comparing it to last year's iPhone 11. Is it really four times more drop resistant? Now the new OLED display has 1200 nits peak brightness, which is just freaking insane. Now all of the new iPhones are gonna be 5G compatible, which is just, I think, mind blowing because 5G phones are typically very, very expensive. Like if you wanna get a 5G phone right now, you get the base level Galaxy S 20 5G version, you're gonna spend $1,099. That's a lot of money at the baseline level to get a 5G phone. The iPhone 12 mini gets 5G at $699. That is really, really impressive. Now 5G coverage is still extremely spotty. I know they brought on like the Verizon rep to be like, 5G coverage is here, finally. It's not really like, I don't have any 5G coverage at all in all of my area, as far as I know, for any carrier. So certain cities will have it, does have it kind of right now, but even then in those cities, the 5G is located to very narrow, small areas. It's not like you're gonna get it in your homes. Typically speaking, 5G ideally is for things like stadiums where cell phone towers get overwhelmed. 5G allows for highly focused, high performance data in those areas when normally congestion occurs. So it's gonna be really good once this pandemic is over. But until then, I don't think 5G is really much we should care about. But the really good thing about the $699 phone getting 5G is that that means other carriers will see, hey, the budget iPhone has the budget iPhone, the, the $700 iPhone has 5G. That means way more people are gonna have 5G compatible phones, which means they're gonna roll out 5G that much quicker. Now, the next feature that I think is really cool is the MagSnape, which allows you to snap objects magnetically to the back of the device. This dummy phone does not have any magnets. Can't demonstrate that for you here. But the great thing about MagSafe, number one, you'll have rear accessories. I'm thinking all kinds of potential options here. Everything from wallets on the back to maybe belting this to a clip on the side where you don't actually have anything, it's just magnetically attached. Uh, that maybe is a bad idea. <laughs> You're gonna do a lot of accidental drop tests probably if you do that. Things like car mounts are gonna be awesome with MagSafe. You're gonna have wireless chargers where instead of searching for the spot where it's gonna charge, it'll just shunk down to the charger. That's gonna be pretty sweet. Now, part of the really cool thing about having a bunch of magnets back here is that normally that would mess with your wireless charging, but it doesn't because Apple is specially engineered and designed this, which is pretty cool. And then we have 15 watt wireless charging, which is kind of like medium speed charging. Like if you plug it in with a wire, I think it's like 25 watts charging speed. Now lots of Android phones have like 40 watt or 50 watt charge speeds, which is just ridiculously quick. And so that's one downside to an iPhone is that it just doesn't speed charge very quick, but it does use the energy that you put into it really efficiently. So essentially it's kind of negated in my opinion. Like it doesn't really matter that much. That said, part of the reason why it's so battery efficient is we have a new five nanometer A14 Bionic processor inside. This thing has a total of 20 six cores, if I counted correctly. That's six main processor cores, 
two high performance cores, four power efficiency cores in that six core setup. Then we have four cores dedicated to just the GPU. And then we have 16 cores for the neural network. It's kind of freaking insane. There's more cores in the freaking smartphones these days than in most desktop computers. That's pretty amazing. This is the first device I've seen use as small as five nanometers for the processor. Have you guys seen, is there any others out there that are less than that? I don't think so. Needless to say, this processor should be significantly faster than last generation, while at the same time being more power efficient, which is great. How much faster? I wouldn't really trust Apple's numbers here because real world performance differs so much from these synthetic benchmarks that the brands like Apple put in front of us. Now the next iPhone would not be complete without a camera upgrade of course and we do have a number of camera upgrades especially as you get to the higher end iPhone 12 Pro Max. There's a number of camera exclusive features that you do not get on the cheaper version this time around. More than just the extra camera it's like actually different sensors and lenses in the more expensive iPhone this year. Now the first major improvement is the ultra wide camera, which is the same across all of the devices from the base model iPhone 12 mini all the way to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. That said, there are a number of improvements, primarily dealing with the sensor, providing better low light and sharper overall image quality, according to Apple. Now, when it comes to the primary wide camera, the iPhone 12 Pro Max features an improved larger sensor with more light being brought into the lens. According to Apple, the iPhone 12 Pro Max gets 47% more light, where the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 and the 12 mini only get 27% more light in the main wide camera. So that goes to show you that we're getting a completely different sensor and different lens set up for the 12 Pro Max on the main camera. That's a pretty big deal if you're a photography buff. It makes the 11 Pro Max actually potentially worth the money, especially if it's only a $100 difference between the two. Now, the iPhone 12 Pro Max wide camera is also gonna feature a new optical image stabilization that is sensor side, so IBES in body image stabilization. This should have improved and slightly better optical image stabilization than previous iPhone models. I'm actually really excited about it because like I said I do use my iPhone to film sometimes I've got a mic that attaches to my iPhone so this new image stabilization hopefully will be significantly improved we'll see now for the telephoto lens of course you have to get the pro model either the pro or the pro max to get a telephoto camera and here once again we have two different telephotos here we have a 52 millimeter and a 65 millimeter on the pro max so you're getting more of a zoom on the pro max whether it's a different sensor size and all of that we don't really know that but we know that it's a different zoom at this point so what that means is the pro max has a better overall camera sensor setup particularly in the wide camera and it also has a better zoom now the pro models also feature something called lidar which is a depth detecting system and it works at nighttime or during daytime so it allows you to take nighttime portrait photos where before nighttime portraits just didn't have enough light to work properly and therefore it just would fail now as far as i can tell there's going to be another special feature for the pro lineup and that is apple raw it's going to be apple's new high performance photography file format if you will it will allow you to tweak the after image take all the data that the camera captures and instead of the ai determining how the final image should look you'll be able to take the full data and manipulate it as a user to get the kind of photo and the colors that you want out of the photo to the best of your ability, which is really, really cool giving the users control over this. And this Apple RAW format will be fully editable inside of the Photos app within the iPhone. So you don't even need a special software, though you will be able to use advanced software like Photoshop to manipulate this new Apple RAW format. And like I said, as far as I can tell, this is going to be an iPhone 12 Pro exclusive feature, at least it's listed exclusively exclusively under the iPhone 12 Pro spec sheet and not on the regular iPhone 12 spec sheet. Though there is no reason why, in theory, it couldn't also be delivered as a feature to the iPhone 12, 
but we don't really know if it'll ever get there at this point. Now all of the new iPhones are going to feature HDR video from the 12 mini all the way to the 12 Pro Max. That said, I'm really curious how much space this new video mode is going to take up because if it's like very, like you film for an hour and your whole iPhone is filled to the max with like one or two video clips, that's not good. Speaking of huge video files, when I film with my iPhone 11 Pro Max, and I do use it for some of my YouTube videos, the hardest part of the workflow is transferring the footage and this comes down to the lightning connector on the iPhone and the drivers with a Windows PC. I'm sure an iPhone transfers footage to a MacBook Pro Pro, no problem, but to a Windows PC, it's like a freaking nightmare. Why, Apple? Come on, fix it. Now, one way that Apple could fix this is by putting a USB-C port on the iPhone 12. Why, Apple, did you not put a USB-C on here? You put a USB-C on the iPad, you didn't put one on the iPhone made me a sad panda. So the way I transfer footage is either over a Wi-Fi using an air transfer app or using a lightning to USB dongle. It actually works pretty well. I'll have a link in the description down below if you wanna check it out. But ideally, I would like to not have to use a middleman adapter. I'd like to be able to go from my iPhone to my PC without any problems. Other camera features, we have an improved night mode, including a night time-lapse mode, which is pretty cool. Now, the front camera can do 4K video recording and has a couple of these additional features as well, which is pretty cool. Something else with iOS 14 is now we're gonna have widgets on the home screen for that quick glance info that you wanna see. Maybe like your health statistics is one thing that I'm thinking I'd put on my iPhone home screen. Now, when it comes to battery life, Apple rates the iPhone 12 mini at 15 hours of video watching the iPhone 12 at 17 hours, the iPhone 12 Pro at 17 hours, the iPhone 12 Pro Max at 20 hours. So that means the bigger the iPhone, the better the battery life with about 30% more battery life in the iPhone 12 Pro Max. The biggest thing wrong with the iPhone 12, are you ready for it? <laughs> the notch. We're in freaking 2020. We've had notchless phones for what, two and a half years now? Like full bezel-less phones for two years. Why do we still have the notch on the iPhone 12, let alone the 12 Pro or the Pro Max? Like, come on, just give us Touch ID with an in-screen fingerprint sensor and take away the notch. The notch is so annoying when I'm viewing videos or reading ebooks and the text goes up the sides and then the notch cuts off the middle portion of the text that I'm trying to read and I'm like, why? This is 2020. No more notches. It's time to grow up, Apple. I can't believe you failed this hard on the overall core design of the iPhone. Like, come on. Now, that said, I still think all of the cool features that the iPhone have still outweighs that major con. So that's my thoughts on the initial launch. I'm impressed. I don't really think it's a massive upgrade from last year. I think the flat side design is really cool. I love the fact that we have bigger screens inside of the bezels, but overall the performance in the GPU and CPU department is probably not that big of an upgrade. The camera also is not that big of an upgrade unless perhaps you get the 12 Pro Max, which has the additional camera upgrades applied to it. Honestly, it's weird to say this, but I feel like the fact that all of these iPhones have a 5G modem is arguably one of the bigger features. Let me know in the comments down below if I missed any major features that you stood out to you. I guess there's the HomePod. That was that was pretty cool. I think some parents are going to love that, being able to annoy the crap out of their kids with the intercom system. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have some questions about what I've been doing the last few months, and I will have a update vloggy type video for you soon. Stay tuned for that. Well, that's it for this episode of Gizmo Slip. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, and if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. I've got lots of videos for you coming up with the iPhone 12. That's right. Lots of content coming your way very soon. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon out. Watch out.